This literary classic, the Bhagavad Gita, a book still sacred to 650 million people. In a tiny room of an old temple in India, a holy man works, often through the night, tirelessly poring over ancient manuscripts. He is A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, known as Srila Prabhupada, is responsible for putting the Bhagavad Gita into the homes of more people than any other person in history. And now, the Bhagavad Gita. ancient battlefield near what is now New Delhi, India, armies representing kingdoms from all over the world assembled for the greatest trial of arms in history. A family dispute over the throne had developed into a worldwide conflict between righteousness and tyranny. Here between opposing armies, with friends and relatives on both sides, seeing brothers armed against brothers, the saintly Arjuna discloses his anguish to his intimate friend, who has assumed the role of Arjuna's chariot driver. Oh, Krishna, seeing my friends and relatives present on both sides and ready to lay down their lives, my whole body is trembling. My mind is real. The driver is the intelligence, and the passenger is the soul. In most cases, the soul does not control the intelligence, which in turn becomes bewildered, cannot firmly guide the mind. The mind, like the slackened reins, does not control the senses, which become wild. This is happening to us every day when the senses are irresistibly drawn to the sense objects. If he chooses to descend the staircase in pursuit of temporary and flickering objects of the senses, external forces take control of him and his free will becomes severely restricted. He comes under the law of karma. Karma is the subtle but stringent law of action and reaction, which operates even in the realm of consciousness. Under that law, the consciousness of one on the downward path degenerates to become like that of an animal. Such a person reincarnates after death into lower than human life forms. This is the result of misuse of free will. In his original form, Krishna resides eternally in his own transcendental realm called Goloka. He assumes varieties of spiritually perfect forms and appears in the physical universe to curb the rise of materialism and tyranny which obstruct the spiritual progress of humanity. He does this in many different ways which are always good and just. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna promises that whoever perfectly and constantly meditates on him will ultimately come to him. 
this is the highest evolution of the liberated soul. Direct relationship with Krishna in his own planet. This is Goloka, the spiritual realm. Here in Krishna's abode, all water is nectar. Every word is a song and every step a dance. Far from formless, the spiritual world is the origin of all forms emanating from the supreme form, Krishna. All forms here are eternal, fully conscious, and blissful. Krishna is the original form, and the human form is the reflection of that form. Here. So this is Srila Prabhupada's garden. And uh, this is where Prabhupada would meet with uh, devotees back in the day. And uh, also, uh, I think his name's Stinson Judah and different important personalities and devotees would sit here and Prabhupada would sit there and yeah, he'd give talks and lectures and things. Beautiful place.